Across the UK, James Whale on Talk Radio. Um, so we haven't talked about the uh, reshuffle, but uh, I'm sure everybody else is going to talk about that before long. Does it make much difference? <laughs> Don't know. Um, Prime Minister has unveiled his plan to fix social care in England uh, two years after he claimed uh, was clear and prepared, but he broke a manifesto pledge to pay for it. Well, it's not surprising he broke a manifesto pledge. You would after the pandemic, wouldn't you? Uh, National Insurance UK wide is going up by 1.25% uh, from April in a move that will cost earners of £30,000 a year £255 a year. Uh, Tom Spencer's political commentator for Young Voices UK, and he's pretty upset about all of this. Uh, Tom, good morning to you. Good morning, James. So tell me why you're upset about this. You were writing uh, in the Daily Mirror today um, saying that uh, Johnson is stealing from the young, like you. Mm, yeah, absolutely. So what he's effectively trying to do is solve the adult social care crisis, which we've had for um, for years and years now through an increase in, in taxation on working people. And quite <clears throat> simply, he's not paying enough attention to seeing who the wealthiest people in society are. You'll find that um, a quarter of, um, of people at the um, state uh, pension age are currently living in house of with wealth exceeding a million pounds. And really, these are the kind of people who are in a position where they can afford to pay, uh, to pay <clears throat> social care. So to me, it doesn't make sense on, why on, we hang should. On, on. Because you're living in a house which is worth more than a million quid. I wish mine was. It's not. Um, if you're living in a house, what I had a few years ago was, and that was stupid to get rid of it anyway. Um, if you're living in a house worth more than a million quid, doesn't mean you can afford it at all. You could be earning, you could be on um, a sort of £30,000 a year wage, but you could have bought the house 30, 40, 50 years ago, and it's gone up that much in value. So why why should you be penalised? Um. Because quite simply, you have the wealth to be able to afford to pay for, for your social care, even if you don't want to sell your house in the entirety. If, if you have a multi-million pound you? house, you're very, because Why you have, you have costs and expenses in your life. And if you're in a position mm. where you can't afford to look after yourself, it's no longer the responsibility of the government to uh, uh, pick up the bill. When budgets are tight, we need to look to the most needy people and quite simply, mm. these people aren't the most needy people. Who are the so most needy justify... people you're talking about? You know, there are um, a million, over a million jobs going and two, and some people in this country are too bloody lazy to go and get a job. Who are these people? So it's not just the people who, who, who don't have work. There's plenty of people who are actually in full-time work who aren't actually in a position where they're able to afford to <clears throat> look after themselves and get the most basic uh, necessities. If you look in, in London... For, well, that I would example, agree with you. Hang on, hang on, Tom, let's... Hang on. I would agree with you about that. Somebody explain to me, please, why a company um, is expecting the taxpayer to subsidise their wage bill. Why am I paying taxes to companies who apparently are making loads of money, but they're paying their staff, some of them, below a living wage how have we got into that situation and why hasn't that been sorted out ever Sim simply because since um, the conservative uh, government entered um into force in uh 2010 they've had to i make didn't see 13 of years of labor doing any good tom <laughs> you may be too young to remember that but tony blair and gordon brown they didn't do much about it don't mm, tell uh, me you're a fan of jeremy corbyn that would really annoy me Oh no, certainly not. I'm I'm definitely not of that uh, a persuasion. But um, okay. you'll find, I'm although teasing. there was still a yeah, although there was still still a problem um, under sort of Tony Blair, Oak and Brown, etc. The problem has got worse, and the um, the amount provided to, uh, to welfare has fallen quite a lot during a time when the economy is not in a great state. So that has caused more and more people not to have enough enough money to look after themselves, and the government has had to. Um, to uh, step in to help people. Yeah, but why are I, I still don't understand why a company um, is a, is getting subsidised because they they're employing people, but if they can't afford to pay somebody a decent living wage, 
when I bet their directors are on fortunes, then why are they in existence? If they can't afford to do what they're doing, why are they still doing it? Mm. So these subsidies, I don't know too much about, but I think that's the reason the uh, minimum wage laws exist. Mm. We have them to ensure that people, if people who are in work are paid a fair wage. And if companies say they aren't in a position to do that, then I don't think it's a type point of government mm. to involve themselves in helping the company rather they okay. should be helping the workers themselves. So you're, you're really more concerned about people who are not working and people who are on benefits? Um, so both. Uh, I think simultaneously we should be both supporting the working poor and the um, mm. unemployed um, young poor. I mean, why, why would you object to everybody paying? You know, I'm a pensioner, right? I draw my pension, mm. my state pension. Um, I didn't really spend much time thinking about getting a private pension. I'm glad I didn't really because, you know, I'm encouraged to work. Um, but now I'm going to be having to pay uh, national insurance as well, which mm. that's pretty unfair because I paid that all my working life. And now as a pensioner, because I'm still working, I am going to be I'm going to be uh, having to pay NI for until I die, presumably. It's, it's something which isn't a nice thing, but the reality is we pay taxes to get the benefits we get from the <clears> existence <throat> of a, a government. People who. But are I pay taxes. And, mm, sure. I pay more tax than you, probably. Most likely, I, I don't pay much tax at I'm all very, because I'm still a yeah. student. <laughs> well, then that's disgusting. You shouldn't even be talking about this because you're not even contributing. But the fact that people who pay. If you earn over, what is it, £45,000, you pay more in tax as a percentage of what you earn. I think it's forty-five. I could be wrong. And so, mm. you, you know, the, the rich people, and then you, you, you earn, if you're lucky enough to earn over £100,000 a year, you pay even more tax. And so people like you go on about how the wealthy aren't paying enough. But the wealthy, once you get over fifty grand, you are considered to be wealthy and you start to pay a, a bigger amount of tax. So they're contributing more than anyone else. Um, so it's true that, that the wealthy are... So do you are... want wealthy people to pay even more? Um, not especially on income tax. I think income tax, our rates are Tom, pretty Tom, go out and get yourself moment. a job, mate. Why should we all pay for you to be at university? Go and get yourself a job. Well, you'll find I'm paying, I'm, I've got a student loan, which I will pay back at a very high rate of well, interest. I so. hope you will pay it back. <laughs> so I'll pay them, that back and forth so you don't have anything to worry about. But also, I'm hopefully entering the job market next May once I leave uni. So you'll make sure. Where are that, you at university? Uh, I'm at a city, a University of London. And what are you studying? Uh, law. Okay. And so you'll be earning quite a lot of money. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> and then I'll uh, get, get, use that to help pay back to ensure everyone's got enough money to live who isn't fortunate enough to be able to go to uni. You'll have changed your political views by then, Tom, trust me. Uh, you, you'll find out I'm already pretty anti-tax rises. I, I don't support um, income tax going up. I'm not supporting national insurance going up now. So I, I'm not some young... Well, where is the money going to come from then? Where, where do um, you think the money to run society is going to come from? There are more efficient ways of doing taxation. So, for example, you'll find um, if we broaden the base of um, value added tax and then reduce the rate, you can actually do that in a way so that the median person has a lot more <clears throat> money left. No, 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 uh, no. Tom, what you're basically this, saying is, well, is I've read what you've said. What you're basically saying is, Tom, if you happen to be old, you're getting too much benefit because you've lived longer. And this is OK, because when you get out into the world and you will um, uh, you will learn things are not quite as they seem. So you want people who've been lucky enough to be employed, not hugely wealthy people, people who could be living on their pensions. But because they have an asset, which is a home that over their long life they have paid for and don't have a mortgage on, you want them to be taxed again. That is totally totally reprehensible I, i'm not actually asking for them to be taxed again i'm simply saying that they should pay for 
their own care. If they are in a position to pay for their own care, then why there's should no they reason. pay for their own care when they've been paying their national insurance stamp all their life? Because Just because the they were lucky enough to make a good investment, why should they be penalised? Well, if we're going to have, have a welfare state, budgets are tight. You can't simply give ev everyone you want money. Then we have to think who should get the money that we're going to spend. And the reality Go and get is, yourself a job. Never mind being at university. Go and get yourself a job now. Goodness sake, hanging around, scrounging off us taxpayers. It's not acceptable. Again, I've got a student loan and I'll pay back much, much more than what I, I get. You may, you may not. You might not. Well, if you not, don't know. If not, then I hope that the welfare state is, is there to protect me. And that's the point, so that people who succeed and, and do very well are in a position to give back and help contribute. You're missing my point. There are lots of, no, there are lots of people who work very hard, never made very much money, but because they bought a house and they've lived in it all their lives, they have some equity in that house. Now, mm. what I would do is I'd take all the equity out and spend it on myself. Mm. Why um, should I pay tax when I've paid tax all year, all my life, uh, and then be charged on something that I, I was lucky enough to do? Why? Why? Because I was lucky? Because you know, younger people aren't aren't having the chance because um, houses are, are are a bit rare now or too expensive or whatever. They were pretty expensive when I was a kid. I mean, it's all relative, isn't it? I mean, my first job on the radio paid me th forty pounds a week. Um, you know, it's all relative. But I don't understand why you think those people who are old who have a house that's worth um, a few hundred thousand pounds, not necessarily millions, should have to actually just um, sell their house to pay for their care. I mean, it'd be much better if we could all, when we get to my age and we don't feel very well, just go and get an injection and put ourselves down. That would be a lot less hassle, wouldn't it? No, that's obviously not what I'm, what I'm proposing. Well, I know, I'm, I'm in favour of that. I'm totally in favour of that. <laughs> Mind you, Why would you want to go in a care home and, you know, the smell of urine and everything else? You don't really want to go into a care home. Well, no, I do. It's, it's, not, it's not something I uh, particularly want either, but my view on that issue is that people should just have the liberty to make their own choices. But what I, I'm all about, if someone wants to, to, to go down that route and go to a care home, they should have the right to. If they want to have an injection, then I think uh, yeah. you can... Well, we're on the same page that. about that, Tom. Very, mm. very wise. Good. <laughs> I, you know, the problem the problem is that you know the very rich people pay a lot of tax already and to go and try and get more tax out of these people who quite often have started businesses employ people and various other things they will all decide to go abroad or go somewhere else or or close things down i mean i know some some people who employ thousands of people and they employ, they they pay huge amounts of tax all their staff pay tax they they contribute enormously, but there are lots and lots of people in society, more than all of these, and we all have got to pay our fair share. And as you just said, you don't pay very much. And if you're a family of four on, say, 30,000 a year, you won't be paying much tax either. Mm, uh, that's true. I, I'm not as convinced on the evidence that if you raise, say, um, VAT or a property tax that people move abroad. There's some evidence of that for corporation taxes, but overall, I, I just don't think that the evidence supports that. Um, but what I'm proposing is actually we don't increase taxes. You're saying we should increase taxes, and I'm saying you're not. So I don't. No, I don't want to see. No, I don't want to see taxes raised. But I'm just asking the question. Um, in fact, I think a lot of people pay far too much tax. It's a disincentive in many ways, but. Where is the money going to come from? We've just suffered this uh, pandemic, which has ne the like has never been seen before. We spent so much money on trying to keep people in work. I think the furlough scheme was completely wrong because a lot of those people are being paid a lot of money and those jobs won't exist. Um, so money, I would say there's better ways to tax it, not necessarily that we should increase the tax burden. Um, I don't completely support everything we're doing, so I don't see the need to to cap social care funding for very, very rich people. So even if you don't 
look at wealth and you look at income, if someone is earning millions of pounds each year, I don't see the point for the taxpayer to to stand in and support those people because they're obviously in a position. But where hang on, if you're if you're you're earning millions of pounds a year, if you're earning a couple of million pounds a year, you're going to be paying a million pounds in tax probably, at least. Um, yeah, you, you'll pay several hundreds of thousands of a pound if you're earning that. But the point yeah. of that is is we ha have a welfare state to look after the most needy people and if someone is in a position to look after themselves i just simply don't think it's the point of the taxpayer or well, everyone else in the country yeah to those people. i tend to I agree i tend to okay. agree i yeah. think i think i think what we should be doing is reorganizing the national health service and i think people who can afford to pay a little more should pay a little more and i'm i'm talking about all of us you know not mm. not big multi-millionaires but you know, if you uh, if you earn, I don't know, 50,000 a year or something and you want to go and see a doctor, you should maybe be able to pay for going to see the doctor a certain amount of money um, because the NHS needs to be radically changed in my view. Yes, and everybody should be able to get medical treatment free if they can't afford it at the, the point of need. At the moment, you can't get that in this country because there's so much of a waiting list. And the management of the NHS leaves a lot to be desired, in my opinion. So that needs a shake up too. Yeah, um, I think the best healthcare models, which are similar to, to the NHS, all have certain small charges for people who are able to afford it. So I think in mm -hmm. Sweden, there's lots more small charges for like um, for like wealthier people, and they don't see anywhere near the um, yeah. level of shortages as we see. So I mean, you can't. I, I it's very different. That. Yeah, it's very difficult to get an NHS dentist now because they don't want to work in the way the NHS told them they should. And so now you probably, unless you're very lucky, have to pay when you get dental treatment. You can also take out um, some insurance for that as well, which is a very good idea. Yeah, so if the NHS are putting in too much, uh, too much regulation in a way that it's no longer possible for dentists to, to operate on their model then it, it makes sense why people are moving to that sort of private mm. sector and if that delivers a better service and they're able to perform that why not all right tom listen thank you very much indeed but just listen leave us old folk alone all right otherwise we're going to get very angry thank you very much indeed that was a good guy tom spencer uh political commentator still at university and uh he uh, he speaks for young voices uk um, let's have a chat right after this. Online, on DAB, and on the Talk Radio app. Talk Radio.